What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. Week 14 here in the SFL, and we are taking on the Salt Lake City Bisons over in the AFC West. We are 9-3. and three. Bisons are 7-5, and five, so should be a pretty good game. Two evenly matched squads. We, of course, are the number one seed in the AFC right now. But the Bisons are number three seed. So very important game. Lots of playoff implications. Two teams fighting for a high rank in the AFC side of things of the playoffs. And the Bisons also have two subscriber players on their team as well, which we will showcase here in a moment. But speaking of subscribers, that's right. We have more subscriber players joining the league. <laughs> Love doing that. Uh, yeah, so we got more two new subscriber players joining the league. We are up to 34 subscribers now guys love the engagement so happy that you guys want to be a part of the SFL I have so much fun making you and tracking your stats, but before we dive into this game Let's get a look at our two new addition subscriber players first up on the Dublin Shamrocks over in the NFC East Formerly the Washington Commanders, we have Uku Tree Rat. Hopefully I said that correctly. If not, please let me know. Shamrock started off terrible in this franchise, but they have since won five in a row, putting them at seven and six on the season. So they are on a hot streak to say the least. But getting a look at Uku here, could not make you a white dude with dreads. Really? Sorry, brother, per your request. Why could I not do that? You might ask. Well, because Madden 24 does not have a feature that they had in their game probably a decade ago where you can literally edit any part of your player's appearance. Oh no, you gotta pick pre predetermined, pre-made models. So this is the best I could do. But uh, if you want me to change it, please let me know. But Uku here, six foot one, 185 pounds out of UCLA. And getting a look at his stats, the first and the most important thing that sticks out to me, look at that 99 speed. Move over Tyreek Hill, we got a new Cheetah in the league. So glad we played the Shamrocks already because I would not want to go up against Uku here and his 99 speed. But as I said, the Shamrocks are on a pretty good win, win streak. And we'll see if uh, Adnold Uku here is going to help them stay on that trend. Then a new subscriber running back here on the Oakland Wizards. Over in the AFC West, we have Ayam Al Musa, who is a 5'10", 160-pound running back out of Alabama. Requested to be 135 pounds, which I would have to believe would be the uh, lowest weighing running back in NFL history, but 160 is the limit. So there you go. He's going to join subscriber linebacker Michael Briner on this team here and getting a look at I am here. He is 5'10", of course, 160 out of Alabama. As I mentioned, Wizards actually are the fifth seed currently, so we could potentially see uh, him in the playoffs as well. And looking at his stats here, nothing sticks out and jumps out at you more than anything else, but just a solid running back all around, 80 rated overall, pretty fast, decent carrying, good acceleration, good trucking, good stiff arm. So jack of all trades, I would say, and looks to be a pretty, pretty well-rounded player and looking to see if he can uh, keep the Wizards in this playoff race. So getting a quick look at the Bisons roster here, I mentioned they got two subscribers on their team. First up here is Mason Buchanan, rookie out of Michigan State. And from what I recall, looking at the stats at the end of each game, he's been on a tear and he is playing really well. Almost 1,300 yards. And I didn't even add him until maybe, I want to say, four weeks ago, possibly five or something like that. Good touchdown interception ratio. So he's got that quarterback of the future tag as well. So Mason will be looking to uh, elevate his boys into a W here, star dev, as I make all subscriber players. And he's also a very well-rounded quarterback, very accurate, can throw on the run, it looks like. Dece good speed, really good speed. So Mason uh, could be a problem there under center. And then we look at our other subscriber, Nico PD Had to bump the overall for Kyron Williams down, for this game at least, so we could see Nico here play because they just kept starting Kyron Williams, actually our former running back, so gonna be a revenge game for him. And Nico looks very good too, 94 speed, 92 carrying, 91 XL, you love to see those type of traits. 
from a running back. So we're going to have to deal with a subscriber running back and halfback that both look really, really good. Then at receiver, they got Garrett Wilson out of Ohio State, Marvin Mims, the rookie uh, on the Broncos in real life. Did this team used to be the Broncos? They, they might have been. I don't know. Uh, Devin Duvernay, DJ Chark. So their receivers are okay. Nothing crazy. David Njoku, the chief on uh, Cleveland Browns, was a team I am very fond of. Not quite as fond of as the Packers, of course, but I am in Ohio, and they are my home team. Getting a look at their offensive line, they got Rasheed Walker at left tackle, then Powers at left guard. Nothing too crazy there. Tyler Linderbaum, though, very good center. And Kevin Zeitler, very good, but very old guard. And then Marcus Cannon, very old guard. Used to be good. Not sure how good he is now in the twilight of his career. And then moving over to the defensive side, they got Quiddy Pay on the left side and Micah Parsons. Okay, Yannick Ngakwe. Nope, never mind. He's hurt. But Micah Parsons, always a threat. And Vita Vea. Okay, so Micah Parsons and Vita Vea. Gotta, our offensive line needs to juice up and they need to be laser focused in this one for sure. Linebacking core, they got Malik Harrison on the left side. Drew Tranquil and Derek Barnes as the middle linebackers. Jelani Tavai as the right linebacker. So pretty good. Decent there. Uh, Denzel Ward. So Najoku and Denzel Ward. Two very good Cleveland Browns on this team. Emmanuel Forbes, who was on my other series, St. Louis Sentinels. Leader in NFL picks over there on that series. Go check it out if you haven't. Jordan Lewis and Eli Cooked Apple <gasps> as the corners. Free safety, Jordan Whitehead. Strong safety. Talano Hufunga. That's a big loss. So PJ Locke stepping in for him. Riley Patterson is the kicker, and Pat O'Donnell is the punter. Couple offensive juggernauts squaring off today. Bisons are number four in the league in points per game. We're number two. We're number one in offensive pass yards, and they're number six. And we're going to be playing in Salt Lake City at Bison Field. So this one should be a good game, and I'm a little scared of those subscriber players. Hey, speaking of subscriber players, if you guys are fired up for some more SFL content, Please like the video and subscribe to the channel for weekly Madden content. I drop multiple series every, each and every week, so you will never be without content. And once I hit 1,000 subscribers, guys, I will do an NFL jersey giveaway. Get you an NFL jersey. Lucky subscriber can win it. Just got to hit that 1K. So without further ado, guys, let's get on down to Bison's Field and get ready for the game. Coach Andy Reid. Okay, so they must have been the Chiefs formerly. So, you know, I was close. It was the AFC West team. And there's Mason Buchanan getting his boys pumped up because they are going to be receiving the opening kickoff. And, of course, we are going to kick it back to them with Justin Tucker. But what can we see out of these subscribers? I have historically been pretty good against subscriber players. Believe I've only lost – no, I've lost two games. I lost to the Dublin Shamrocks who have subscribers. And I'm pretty sure I lost to the Brooklyn Nighthawks as well. At any rate, I've been pretty good, but Buchanan here going to look to end that streak for me. There are his stats again, 1266 through the air, 12 touchdowns to five picks. So he looks to be playing pretty well, but we have a defense who last week started off very poorly, but they put it together in the second half. So they are riding a little bit of a morale boost, I would say. And there is going to be PD on the opening give. He has the outside. Okay, brought down there by Jordan Poyer, but Nico Petey going to get a gain of 16. That is the two-year pro out of Colorado. Subscriber on this channel. Nice run for him and an instant first down. Got the Bisons already close to midfield here. Let's go press blitz. We're going to send uh, Joyner, LaMarcus Joyner. He wasn't the one to get home. It was Bobby Wagner. And we are going to introduce Mason Buchanan to the turf here at Bison's Field. That's what you like to see coming out the gates. I mentioned two teams jockeying for playoff position. So this is a very important game indeed. Buchanan gonna drop back. He's looking for targets. He's got Garrett Wilson there for his first catch of the game. Gets back a little bit more, a little bit, uh, you know, the sack yards that was lost there, plus a little bit more. So that was a nice safe play, making it third and a bit more manageable. Buchanan will come out with a bunch to his left and Petey, over there to his left. Let's see what he does. Maybe we can possibly bait him. Nope. It's going to be wide open. There's Devin Duvernay. That was great vision by Buchanan. That was a clutch first down pickup on a third and eight. Bison's first drive going pretty good, I would say. They got it into T-Birds territory now. So ball is on the 42. Buchanan sticking in this shotgun. Look here. 
He's surveying. He's looking. He's going to step up and run. Oh, and a nice block set there on Bobby Wagner. Miles Garrett had to hawk him down from way back there in the backfield. He finally does, but Buchanan showing off some of the wheels. You know, I showed his speed pregame. He's he's balanced all around. I mean, he's he's accurate. He can throw on the run, as we saw. He's got the speed, and he put that on full display there. We're going to send some more pressure at him, and it's another catch there by Duvernay. Brought down there by Poyer, but Mason Buchanan, Dr. Mason MD, I will say, as he is picking us apart like a surgeon in the backfield. Came out zone, but I'm going to audible into some pressure here. Hopefully, we can get back there to Buchanan. Nope, it's going to be a check down. There's Kyron, our former running back, playing his team for the first time since we cut him. And I'm sure Kyron was very confused when we cut him. Uh, I cut him because we added another subscriber player, running back Tubby McDouble, to our team. But before that, Kyron was playing great. So when we cut him, he was probably like, bro, WTF, mate, what are you doing? And he's on the Bisons now, and there's Petey looking to get his first score. First score of the game. He sure will. And I'll tell you what, these two subscribers made that drive look very, very easy. So I'm not liking that. Defense going to have to make some adjustments in this one. Here comes Jordan Love leading the SFL, I still believe, in passing yards. He was a couple weeks ago and up there in passing touchdowns as well. Of course, he has having a great season, 23 touchdowns, 10 picks, but over 3,500 yards through the air. And we are only in, here in uh, week 14, so still a good chunk of football left to go. He might get up there close to 5,000. I don't know. And for the first time in weeks, we got our true number two wide receiver, Zay Jones, back. So let's see if he makes any type of an impact. He might. Did he catch that? Oh, my God. Whoa. That was a 50-50 ball. Welcome back, Zay Jones. That may have been an ill-advised throw. I'm not going to sit here and lie to you guys. But Zay Jones making us look very good on that one. I got to see this again. Throw on the run, cross body, changing directions, 50-50 ball with Forbes. Zay Jones just snatched it from the sky. I can't be doing that too much, though, because uh, a 50-50 ball means could be good, could be bad. Let's come out to a little RPO action here. That's been our bread and butter. Zay Jones, fresh legs. They should be fresh. He's missed about four weeks, and he's got all 43 of our passing yards so far, so a very very hot start for Zay indeed. Let's go ahead and switch things up here to the run game. Bring in not Tubby McDouble, but Kareem Hunt, who had four touchdowns in the last game, looking to pick up where he left off. But that one's going to come back as a hold. I can almost guarantee you. We'll check. Yeah. Holding Who's getting cut? Offense. Who's getting the pink slip today? <laughs> eh, not Valda Scaling. No. He played pretty good when Zay Jones was hurt. Yeah, but as I mentioned, though, when Zay Jones was hurt, uh, Marquez Valdez-Scantling came in and replaced him, and he played very well. Nothing but good things to say about his performance. Now, got to remember, we got Vita Vea here and Micah Parsons, so running the ball may be tough, but Tubby finding a nice cutback lane. Would he pay the defensive lineman goes down, but Tubby... Going to get this into the red zone here for the T-Birds. Go Tubby again here, this time out of the I formation. See if we can follow our big fullback. And yeah, had a nice cutback lane there to the inside. But Tubby is definitely a power back. His juke move leaves uh, just a little bit to be desired, I would say. So was not able to change direction quick enough. So only a gain of one. But we are still in the red zone, obviously in Justin Tucker field goal range. He has seemingly infinite range. So hopefully we can uh, continue this good drive here. We're going to target oh, Darren yeah. Waller, and Darren Waller makes a tough catch. Okay, so receivers, albeit only two of them so far, Waller and Jones, both catching difficult passes. Not quite sure what that linebacker is doing. Probably trying to bait me, which he is. Jordan Love, throw it away. That's a good play. I should have had a corner route or something to the back of the end zone because that uh, corner or linebacker, whoever he was, he was definitely, definitely playing off of Chris Olave, but he kind of baited me a little bit and ends up making a pretty good play. Now, third and goal here, part of me wants to kind of audible this to Tubby. And you know what? That might actually be what I do, even though 
We do got Micah Parsons and Vita Vea there. Let's uh, ID up Mike, Micah as the Mike. Let's see if Tubby can get in. He's trying. Gets it down to the one yard line. And man, with the way that the Bisons drove that ball down the field so easily, and Coach is even saying go for it too, might I add, so he wants me to go for it as well. Thinking something inside zone though, I'm not liking these plays. The coach is calling for me though, and I do try to stick with coach suggestions. This one we might be able to get in there. Gonna go ahead and ID up the middle linebacker is the Mike, and we should probably auto double team beat Avea too. Gotta snap this ball though. Tubby, can you get in? Stonewalled at the line. Wow. Stonewalled at the line. Jordan Whitehead gets us. Vita Vea does get hurt though. That could be a huge loss. But uh chance to tie the game. Squandered. And we got him at the two-yard line, so got to make sure they don't rip off some huge gain here. They got Kyron Williams. He could smell blood in the water. I'm sure Kyron, someone tackle him, please. Gets a little bit of breathing room. Always gets dicey down there on the one-two-yard line. Don't want to see anybody rip off like a 98-yard gain, you know? And now they are going gun. So I think, me thinks, we're going to go ahead and bring in our blitz. With the press here, see if somebody can get home to Buchanan. That's a safety. It's not. Oh, come on, man. You could literally split an ant's pubic hair in half and place that in the distance from where he got sacked. What? I mean, tell me how that's not a safety. I mean, he must have had his pinky toe. No. Bad call. It's a bad call, but you know what? I will take it as we are going to get the ball back. With pretty good field position. And this also is going to take us down close to the end of the first. So let's get a... Ooh, almost blocked there. Wow. Pat Peterson, do you have anything for me on this punt return? You really don't. But we are going to start the drive from the 44. Final play here before the end of the first. Going to come out with a, a little mesh concept. And... Oh, no, that could be picked. It is picked. Manuel Forbes. We see him pick the ball off so often in my St. Louis Sentinels franchise series. Don't really know why I went to Tubby out of the backfield. Definitely wasn't the best call. Wasn't the right read at all. And so that wasn't the final play before the end of the first. This will be golden opportunity wasted by the T-Birds. Kyron Williams picking up three. Cannot afford to do things like that. So we got him on passing yards. They got us on rushing yards, but we have only run nine plays to their 13. So I guess not a huge disparity. But that last drive was indeed our chance, and we wasted it. I, I'm not going not gonna to say we, I'm not going to rope you guys into this. That was all me just making a boneheaded play, which I do from time to time. I mean, we are 9-3, and three, so obviously I've played some really good games. Ooh, nice deflection there by Peterson. One thing I'll say about Buchanan, that was his first incompletion, but he does seem to kind of take off at the first sign of pressure, possibly. So uh, maybe we can use that to our advantage with these press blitzes here. We're going to have Leonard Floyd drop out as an extra defender. And what did I say? It's the Marcus Joyner. So defense, hello. That's our third sack already of this half. But anyways, second and four. We're going to come out play action here. This might be a Zay Jones shot again. He's played so great for us so far. And it is Zay turning up field. My God, man, he's closing in on 100 yards already. I mean, he's got all the catches besides Waller. And uh, he's got to be up there in 80, something like that. So Jordan Love definitely trying to make up for that previous mistake. Let's shift things over to the running game here for a little while. Tubby might have a little bit of a crease there if we can block Micah Parsons. And we did. Tubby up the middle. Nice stiff arm there. Tubby starting out 6 for 29. And I think it is time to bring the young man his dinner. What is his dinner, you might ask? He's on a strict diet of first downs. That's all he wants. That's all he's hungry for is third downs. I mean, no, not third downs. I'm sorry. First downs. So, uh, no, don't want to ID the safety as the mic. No, no, no. None of that tomfoolery. We want Tubby out of the gun, running it to the left side. Good blockers again. Tubby cutting up field. There we go. Seven rushes for 42. Boy, coach really wants to be called levels. I can see. All right. I guess we're calling levels. 
not my favorite play in the world, but I kind of like Waller or Hunt. I feel like one of those guys is going to have to be open, right? Uh, Waller, back corner of the end zone. Perfect ball placement by Love. That was a little back shoulder throw there. It was a great route by Darren Waller, but an even better pass from Love. That was crispy. That was extra crispy chicken. You're going to go ahead go ahead and review that. I don't care. You ain't going to overturn that ref. Ooh, you might, actually. Ah, uh, that one actually might get overturned. No. It stands as called. Wow. So, that yeah, that was a beautiful, beautiful pass from Love. Wait for the T-Birds to respond. And if nothing else, I'll tell you what. Our defense is playing great. Just going to try to keep that going here for this last six and a half minutes. Let's uh, tell you what. We came out zone, but let's audible it to a little pressure here. As a matter of fact, Nico Petey, it's going to be a run to him. And he's met there by several Thunderbirds after only picking up three. So nice recovery by the defense. Yeah, that's the thing. If something's working, you don't want to just continue to call it, call it, call it. Because eventually the AI is going to clue in on that and Madden will start cheating. And we all know Madden does cheat from time to time. This could be PD again. It's not. It's a play fake. There's the Chief. Najoku. They say that he did get the first down, albeit just barely. So a nice conversion for the Bisons. Okay, so this is a good drive here by Salt Lake City. Uh, see if they can keep it going here. Ooh, wide open. That's an off-target pass, though. Okay. He was looking for PD on a route. Wow, Petey was out there. That might have been a little wheel route or something. I didn't see it. Let's go mid blitz. Pressure usually gets home on the mid blitz, but we're going to need Poyer to play the middle of the field here. Yep, because Petey's leaking out on a route. There's Najoku for his second straight catch. That moves the chains again and gets it into Thunderbirds territory. Ison's driving here. Got to be careful. Want to definitely make sure that... Uh, we keep the momentum in our favor. Bisons have it right now. There's Petey on a run trying to stiff arm Antoine Winfield. Bisons got the ball first. Yeah, so we will get the ball after halftime. Buchanan dropping back, Bruh. and it's Najoku. That could be six, and it is. Jordan Poyer got beat on coverage, could not recover, and that was the David Najoku drive. Had three catches, last one resulting in six. And the Bisons are about to go up 14 to 7. So keeping the pressure on us. But our Thunderbirds just came off a nice drive of our own. I mentioned pregame. This is a battle of two playoff teams. So I figured that we would be in store for a good one. And as of right now, looks like we are. Patrick Peterson, maybe he can help out on the kick return. Thought we had a crease there for a second. 27 yards might be a record on kick return yards for me. Graham Glasgow, though, our offensive lineman, gets hurt, so that's not good. He's a pretty good one. That's our right guard, eight-year pro out of Michigan, and he looks to be in some pretty significant pain there. Zay Jones over 100 yards, though, I just saw. Wow. Okay, so he is playing great. We got nearly four minutes. Want to work our way downfield methodically, so uh, let's come out single back here and see if... But I can't believe I let you slip. I think about it seven days a week. Anybody can get open. That's going to be a sack, and Jordan Love fumbled it. McDouble picks it up, thank God. But we just lost 13 yards. That was 11 from heaven. Not 11 on this franchise, 98. That's 98 from a place that I hate, I guess, if you want to call it that. Micah Parsons just brought the heat. That was not good at all. So now we're fighting an uphill battle here. And don't need to get this all back here. Just want to get a respectable amount of it back. So let's see who can get open. Possibly a Waller again. Oh, look at Waller. We are going to get it all back. And Waller's still going. Oh, my God. This is the tight end show. David Njoku and Darren Waller. And I'll tell you what, man. Waller catching some extremely difficult passes in this one. They are being put on the money from Jordan Love. I back shouldered that one too. But I mean, that is not an easy pass at all. No way about it. I mean, he had Denzel Ward, the warden, draped all over him and still breaks the tackle and still turns up field. Oh, God. And of course, Darren Waller. Yeah. There we go. Makes some just phenomenal plays and gets injured. Of course, that would happen. And I'm thinking here on this one, I like Kareem Hunt on the outside run. 
So uh, ah, we're going to run it. I don't want to run it towards Micah Parsons. And I see him over there. So let's go ahead and motion out Chris Olave. ID up this guy as the mic. I need an extra blocker over there. Don't really have one. Kareem, nice cut, though. He's coming off of his best game of the season. Not a lot of yards last week, but four big touchdowns. And that is going to take us to the two-minute warning. Okay, that's a good sign. Darren Waller is going to indeed come back. So I was a little worried there for a minute. But he looks to be okay. Now, three chances with Tubby and or Kareem Hunt. Wow, he's back already. Okay. Welcome back, Waller. Single back wham up the gut. Come on, Tubby. Give me some blocking. Tubby! He did not have it at first. He was dropped in the backfield. But he pushed that pile forward, hanging on to that ball for dear life. And we're going to knot things up here at 14, but there's still a minute 58 left. So cannot uh, get complacent here. Got to keep playing good defense. It's starting to fizzle out after that last drive. And we'll see if we can go into the locker room tied or if we'll be down. See what the rookie out of Michigan State has for us. Buchanan here. He had a great drive on the last one. And he's looking. Oh, my God. That's Devin Duvernay. Oh, come on. Come on. Bobby Wagner. You got to catch him. He's not going to. What is going on here? A one play touchdown. What? From Devin Duvernay? That was just uh that was just a little in breaking route. And I mean there's no excuse. There's four Thunderbirds in the vicinity. There's literally four Thunderbirds in the vicinity. So there's that that there's that da, 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 da. that's inexcusable. I mean, look at that. Look at that. How does that even happen? I mean, yeah, they just all run to each other. Dee! Yeah, maybe we should go for Duvernay instead of running into each other. I'm actually in no rush here. As a matter of fact, with all three timeouts and still a minute 41. So I think draw play to Tubby seems like the right idea to me. And I'll tell you what, McDouble's running good. Still going too. Darren Waller. Usually when a player gets injured twice in the same game like that, it means it is uh, something a little bit more significant. So be very curious to see if Waller comes back. I wouldn't be surprised if he doesn't. And we're going to go screen again, but this time flip it to the right. Vita Ve is coming right at me. And Tubby just pushing would-be tacklers aside. I'm actually not going to call a timeout here because, again, as I mentioned, I am really in no rush. Okay, so Micah Parsons has his X Factor on, and Darren Waller will not come back, by the way. I think I skipped that one. But, uh, yeah, we find ourselves in a little bit of a pickle. But Logan Thomas, oh, had to adjust for it. That was not an accurate ball by Love at all. But our backup tight end, Logan Thomas, who is also on my St. Louis Sentinels team, might I add. He makes a very, very good catch there. Thinking maybe Thomas or Love possibly hunt out of the backfield on the Texas route. And Micah Parsons is a problem in this game. Gonna have to uh, probably double team my man for the rest of the game. Kareem Hunt is gonna be an extra blocker for me and uh, not really quite sure the direction I'm looking in this one. It's Logan Thomas. So with Darren Waller going out, Logan Thomas making some clutch catches. Jordan Love now at 242 as well. All right, where's Parsons at? Uh, no, I don't wanna do that. You're getting double teamed, my friend. Gotta double team Micah Parsons because he is a problem out there kareem hunt out of the backfield he might score and he does wow just came off of four touchdowns on the ground last week that one wasn't on the ground that one was through the air but now five touchdowns in the last two games and we do indeed knock things up however is 32 seconds too much time for the bisons that's the real question last time they had the ball they did it in about seven seconds so if that's the case they could score almost five times. Little dime blitz here coming at him. Let's go ahead and get this thing into halftime. Hopefully, oh, that's a dagger from Najoku. Bison's going to go ahead and use their last timeout. That's their last one, though. Oh, no, they have one more. I'm sorry. So this is definitely dangerous, dangerous territory here. We're pressing up with the guys. Bobby Wagner going to guard up on Petey. Luckily, that was an overthrow because... Najoku might have housed it again. Yeah, I don't really know what's going on here, man. What happens to all that great pressure that we were seeing in the first half? That's going to be passed out of bounds. And with only nine seconds left, not quite in field goal range here. We'll see how they play this one. 
We're going to go man coverage and hopefully just play some good man coverage. That would be great. Uh, going to need to have Garrett just jumped off sides. Garrett jumped off sides. Going to give him a free five yards. So we're going to call the same formation here. Why not? Going to call the same exact formation. And we'll see where Buchanan. He's going to take off. We know he can do that. And he's going to get him into field goal range. Wow. Okay. This Bison's team came to play. Not going to lie to you. They are doing great. And we're going to go into the locker room down by three with a lot of question marks to figure out in the second half. Jordan Love was great on the intermediate throwing. Perfect quarterback rating. So we are going to keep it at that. And I think we're going to have to defend the medium pass too because Buchanan was a surgeon back there. He was picking us apart. And uh, we need to go back to the pressure, I think, because that's really, that was when we were looking our best, is when we were forcing Buchanan to roll out of the pocket, make bad decisions, and take sacks. So probably going to think about dialing up some more pressure and got to get this man involved. Five receptions for 106 yards. I had to go ahead and take the hoodie off, man. This game's got me sweating bullets here. We're going to start out first and 10. Little uh, mesh concept here. And is that Zay Jones again? My God, it is. Mama, someone stop that, man. Because he is having himself a game. They've allowed 339 yards, have the Bisons. Not really, again, a big fan of any of these plays that the coach is calling for me. Let's go single back out or play action out of the single back. I'm looking at maybe Seals Jones or possibly Zay Jones. One of the Jones brothers, somebody please get open for me. And that might be Seals Jones. Okay. Oh, he dropped it. He dropped it. Yep. Seals Jones, he's our third string tight end. Again, I mentioned uh, Darren Waller. He's not coming back. So Seals Jones, not the best hands in the world. And I have noticed Chris Olave not really getting pressed too much in this one. So that's uh, maybe one of the reasons why he's lacking the targets pick up a big third and nine here please i'm throwing it into a bunch of riffraff did give valdez scantling a chance he couldn't hang on to it and our first drive coming out of the locker room is gonna be an aj cole punt unfortunately and yeah i'm not lying we're gonna start out nickel blitz here that's that is when things were working the best that's when i was most comfortable buchanan changing the play at the line here we'll see if uh, now elijah mitchell's back there as a matter of fact and he is, in fact, going to get it out of the backfield on the wheel route. That's a great blitz beater, if you will. Running back wheel out of the backfield. Okay, there's PD back in here, and we're going to continue blitzing here. I'm not shying away from it. LaMarcus Joyner, it's going to be a screen pass to PD, and he's breaking tackles and making jukes. He's doing everything. He refuses to go down until he's pile drive there by Brandon Graham. What a play from the two-year pro out of Colorado. Now, second and 10, can we continue to dial up this pressure? That's the question. It's Petey, and he's going to be stopped by Jay Mongstro, our subscriber, defensive tackle out of Iowa. Nice to call his name. We haven't called it too much since he joined the SFL, but we just called it there on a big, big, big play and now it is again third and ten this is our chance to get him off of the field where's buchanan gonna go he's gonna roll and he's gonna pick up huge yardage can he fumble he's not gonna he's gonna get this all the way down to the three mason buchanan might just be him he might just be him see if he gives the ball to pd on this one he is and we're actually there to shut him down nice play there by bobby wagner can we hold him to a field goal kyron williams is out there you know he can smell blood in the water it's going to be actually a give to roger carter the fullback out of georgia state wow and that's a big loss there and uh they're coming out gun with three wide receivers so i think it's it's pressure time guys I think it's pressure time. Can Bobby Wagner or someone get back there? We're going to definitely try. Nope. Najoku's second touchdown of the game. And Buchanan is carving us up like a daggone Thanksgiving turkey. Get your bibs on. Get your dinner plates out. My man is having a friggin' feast out there. And his bison's going to go up by 10. I mean, Jordan Love playing good. Not going to lie. Chris Olave, though, is getting pressed finally. And this might be the time to hit him on a deep ball. It might 
be there, and it is! Olave might take it all the way, and he does. Don't count us out yet. This is a offensive shootout. Nice backflip there by Olave. Don't hurt yourself, please. That would be embarrassing and highly unfortunate. But we are able to draw just a little bit closer. Offense, not the problem in this one, though. Offense is not the problem. It's the defense. And up until this point, we just have not been able to figure out this Andy Reid-led Bisons team with Mason Buchanan, subscriber out of Michigan State at the helm. Oh, yeah, I mean, I guess we're going to go mid-blitz again, but that really hasn't been working too well. I need a pick or something. You got to be kidding me. What is going on here? Devin Duvernay is not that good. I'm sorry. And he's looking like freaking... Justin Jefferson out there, Jamar Chase. And no matter what we call, no matter what we call, I mean, I don't know. Do we got to drop our guys back a little bit? Is that is that what's going on here? I'm not sure. But no matter what we call, just can't figure this team out. And they're liable to put up a 50-piece on us if we're not careful. So got to find a way to turn things around. Game is not over yet. There's Petey out of the backfield, though. Subscriber to subscriber connection. And Mason Buchanan is now at 323 for the game. We got a spy on the field this time because I know I saw what Buchanan did last time. He picked it up on the ground. And that time I'm about sick of David Njoku, man. Good tight end. Really good tight end. I like him a lot. Pro Bowler last season for the first time. Well deserved, I would say, even if uh, Joe Flacco might have been <laughs> the reason why he got there. But I am sick of calling his name in this one. Pressure and I missed the tackle. And somehow Buchanan gets rid of it. This guy, this guy is on fire. This guy's playing possessed. We're going to call him the exorcist out there. I should have had him for a sec. And he's able to elude it. And somehow still get the pass off. And PD is going to score. This one uh, not looking too promising for the T-Birds. We may have the Bisons draw a little bit closer to us in the good old playoff push because we cannot keep them out of the end zone. Could get a block kick, though. So close. But you see, this is a, I mean, basically even in passing yards and rushing yards. I guess you could say the only difference really is that pick that we did throw with Love earlier. So maybe that, maybe that is a little bit more significant than I even realize here. But uh, I don't know. Ricky Seals Jones, I know you're going to block. And we are going to go play fake here. Need a little bit of time here in the pocket. Logan Thomas. Tell you what, he's playing great in his role. Stepping in for the for the injured Darren Waller. Picks up a good first down. Tubby again here on first down. Going to try to follow Kyle Juszczyk and Chris Olave. If he could have held a block, Tubby could have been gone. But uh, corner shed off of his block pretty instantly. Draw again. Coach is calling it. I, I like it. I like it. Not really huge sense of urgency right now in terms of the clock. Because one way or the other, we're going to have to stop the Bisons on defense. So whether that be uh, we score now, you know, with a methodical drive and there's not too much time left. Or we score here quick. Doesn't matter. We're going to have to, at some point, stop this Bisons team. And therein lies the problem. That is what I'm worried about. So first order of business, scoring could be Valdez Scantling on the RPO. We'll see. I think it is. Yep. And Olave, you were setting some good blocks earlier. Now I think you need to hit the weight room a little bit because your blocks really ain't hitting. <laughs> Got to double up on Micah Parsons here. This could be Kareem out of the backfield on the Texas route. He is a good route runner. Oh, man. Did not see Jordan Whitehead. Did not expect him to uh, play the middle of the field like that and play the middle of the field he did. And here on third down here, what do you do? PA crossers maybe? I don't know. This play uh, sometimes is pretty good. But again, we're going to have to watch Micah Parsons and this defensive line. Quick shot to Olave. It's there. Clutch catch. Jordan Love now at 400 yards. Chris Olave only two catches, but for 92 yards, so two big ones. See if Tubby can pick up some good yardage here out of the eye. 12 yards to go till the promised land, and there's a big hole, and Tubby does, in fact, score. So, I will say it again, probably sound like a broken record right now, but I do not care. 
Offense is not the problem. This, whatever it takes, man, whatever it takes. I don't care if you got to go in there, gouge somebody's eyes out, break somebody's leg, freaking deflate the footballs. Look, by any means necessary. No, obviously I'm joking. I'm not about that stuff. It's good, clean football. But I'm just saying if someone's finger gets stepped on, Mason Buchanan's maybe, I wouldn't be mad at it. But three-point game, seven minutes to go. Who wants to step up on defense? Raise your hand, please. I want to know. Who wants to step up? Going pressure again. It really hasn't been working for quite a <laughs> David Njoku, you are the bane of my existence right now. Okay, I'm, I'm about sick of you, David. So Patrick Peterson, that's going to be your responsibility on this one. This is probably going to be an end around, and it is, but Yaya Diaby's there to sniff it out. So that will put a slight damper on this drive, making it second and 13. Uh, but yeah, it's like Najoku, he's the guy. He, he's the guy that I have to make sure. I'm going to have Leonard Floyd probably be an extra defender. And his sole purpose is to watch David Njoku. That's his sole purpose in life. Finally, some good defense there by DJ Reed. And this could be the stop that we need, folks. Come on, guys. I believe in you. Najoku's still who I got my eyes on. So, Leonard Floyd, you're playing coverage for right now. Buchanan rolling out. Come on. Someone get to him, and there we go. I feel like he had daylight. Could have scrambled and maybe got it there. But who was it? It was Yaya Diaby, and it was DJ Reed. Those were the ones to step up on that play. Pat O'Donnell going to punt it back here. We're going to let this thing bounce. Good call as it's a touchback. Now let's go down here and hopefully pick up the lead. I mean, it's second and very manageable. So even if we don't pick this up, we should still be able to get it one would think. So Tubby up the gut is going to be the call. And two yards short. So this is a gigantic third down. We're going to go outside with Kareem Hunt. I do think that's a good call, and I do also like the defense that I'm seeing over here. We're going to go ahead and ID up this guy as the mic. Kareem, please, should be able to pick this up, and he will just barely. Kareem, two for 16, but his biggest run of the game right there. We do move the chains. We're going to stick with Tubby here for as long as they allow me to, so we're going to come out of the gun this time and need a good block. It's kind of there. I mean, three yards, not the best pickup in the world, but uh, could have been worse. Could have been a loss, right? So, you know, um, there you go. It wasn't. It was a positive gain. And we will, ooh, Olave getting pressed, but they're not single high. If they were single high safety, I would be audible on this to a streak, but we're not. So it's going to be single back PA. Zay Jones, will his big day continue? It will. And he might actually go all the way. He is. Wow. This game is nuts. Couple of offensive juggernauts going back and forth. And for the first time today, yes, you heard me correctly. Thunderbirds have the lead by four. But the question is, is Father Time our biggest foe right now? Did we leave too much time on the clock? Three and a half minutes is a world of time for anybody, but especially this high-powered offense that the Bisons have. So we played good defense last drive, but going to need to dig down deep and try to do that poss one, maybe possibly two more times. Good old-fashioned man coverage is going to be the call here. PD leaking out on a route. I see him. And Duvernay and Najoku. Combination of Duvernay and Najoku has been deadly. But also make Mason Buchanan and Nico PD. Those four, I would say, have been the biggest weapons. And again, we're going back to pretty much looking at Najoku. He's leaking out in the flat. Buchanan probably looking for him. Wow, that was supposed to go to PD, I think. But it looks like Marvin Mims might have actually got in the way. I am going to go back to the Blitz. But again, still going to user up somebody on Najoku. But let's see if that pressure can get home. He's probably looking for David. I think he might have had tunnel vision on him because I had him locked up. And what a big, big sack from Wagner. Buchanan a little slow to get up. Okay. So, see, and that's what I'm saying. We went away from that press for a little while. And uh, that time we went back to it. And that might have been why they weren't really expecting it. Garrett, we got eyes on Buchanan. We missed him. And he had room to run. What's he doing? 
On third and 18, you're just going to throw a little bunny out of bounds? What is going on, Mason? You've played so good up until that point. But that might have been the sell of the century. And if they don't pick this one up, that will probably be ball game. It's Najoku. I hate him. But I don't think he got it. I don't think he got it. He didn't. He, he had it initially. He had it initially. And then his own momentum carried him. Carried him past. Like before. Where the line to gain was. So if we can just run this clock out. What a crazy, crazy game. Surprised they didn't call a timeout there. Their logic isn't that good. But two-minute warning will stop the clock. Now here's the thing though. Bisons do got all three timeouts. So if we don't pick this up. I mean it would probably be a passing situation. One would think. And third and four. Yeah, coach is calling screen two. And honestly that's kind of where my mind was going. Because if we pick this screen pass up and we're running towards or passing towards Micah Parsons, so maybe he is really thirsty to get in the backfield. That would be nice. Kareem, give me the blocks. We got it. And barring something crazy, I'm going to go to ball carrier conservative. Barring something crazy, we are going to get out of Salt Lake City with a highly improbable win. I can't even believe that, man. We had no business winning this game. I mean, it was back and forth, you know, in our defense, sure. But I just feel like the, you know, the Bisons had all the momentum there at, at, at the right time. And somehow it was that, that final defensive stand. I mean, the final defensive stand, I guess you could say it was the last play. But it was that one where we had the uh, TFL from Yaya Diaby. And then we had the nice breakup from DJ Reed. And that ultimately is probably what is going to seal this for us. Now, I am going draw on this one for sure. 100% going draw. Uh, definitely going to let the clock tick down, of course. Come on, Tubby. Dig deep. Can you do it? I think he's going to be stopped short. He is. Yeah, 24 rushes for 126 yards. They might say, huh, here's the thing. Wait a minute. 38-42 is the score. Field goal would put us up. Yeah, that would put us up by seven. Okay, we got to kick the field goal. It is going to be a long one. We do got Justin Tucker, but I need to shut my mouth now. Oh, I love that slow down kick, having that ability, man. Okay, so there we go. We're up by seven. So the Bisons with no timeouts, even if they somehow march down the field and scored a touchdown, it would only tie the game. We've seen a one play touchdown. We've seen some big catches to Najoku. So he'll probably be the user man, if you will. But let's go get it done here, boys. This is this is what champions are made of here. Leonard Floyd, I know you're like my honorary coverage guy. I'm sorry, brother. That's just the way that it has to be. And down goes Buchanan. It's Miles Garrett. That should seal this one here. Not going to speak too soon. Um, but that was a huge play. Big play there. Buchanan, where's he going to go? Going to go out of bounds to the bench. See if Buchanan has a miracle in the tank. It's sure going to take one. And I don't... He's folding. He's played so great this game, man. Shout out Mason Buchanan. Subscriber on this channel. He has played so great in this one. But these last couple of drives, he's a rookie, you know? These last couple of drives, just making some huge mental errors, throwing the ball away when you got a chance to run, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, he's looking for Najoku. Najoku actually catches it, but that's going to be ball game. 45 to 38. Quarterbacks combined for about 900 yards, or at least in the upper 800s. Andy Reid is mad. I am not. I'm glad. And I'm sure some of these Bison's players are sad. The good times that could have been had, but now I got nothing. That's the last of my rhymes. Let's check out the stat pad. How about that one? There you go. Had a couple minutes to think of one. Yeah, so nearly 900 yards passing combined between these two quarterbacks, but Jordan Love does get the edge. Shout out Mason Buchanan. You played great. Nico Petey, I mean, the stats aren't going to really say too much, but two touchdowns, and he showed up in some clutch moments. Also, Buchanan, 54 yards on the ground, too. Wow. McDouble, though, shout out Tubby McDouble out of Oregon State. 
24 attempts and a buck 26 on the ground. Najoku carved us up, and so did Devin Duvernay, but look at Zay Jones. Nearly 200 yards, one measly yard shy. Logan Thomas played good. Darren Waller played good, but he's probably hurt now. Chris Olave, only two receptions, but two big ones. And then defensively, I mean, it was the pressure in the backfield. Bobby Wagner, two TFLs and two sacks. Also, Yaya Diaby, two big TFLs as well. Micah Parsons had a great game. And then we also had Brandon Graham had a sack. Miles Garrett had a sack. LaMarcus Joyner had a sack. We had no picks, and of course they had one. But that was a fun game. Thunderbird's going to get the victory. But more important, let's check on our subscriber stats here in week 14. Nighthawks keep losing, unfortunately, for them. They are in our division, so that is good for us. And subscriber quarterback here, Derek Daragosa out of Indiana. 199 yards, but no touchdowns and an interception. So he has struggled as of late. And more importantly than that, his Brooklyn Nighthawks also have struggled. They're last place in the AFC East currently. San Juan Tigers get the loss to the Redwoods here. And we'll get a look at... We have a couple subscribers on this team here. We have a subscriber tight end and a subscriber receiver here. So we're looking for Nick Stoyer, no catches. St. James, no catches. Wow, what are the Tigers doing? That is the question. Defensively, they got a couple corners. They got uh, King Love and Dior Love. So King Love, six tackles, but no picks nor sacks. And Dior Love, he had three tackles. And also, no picks nor sacks. Canton Condors finally get a W, man. It's been a while for them. I believe that's their third on the season. And we'll take a look at, they got a receiver. And they also got a couple defenders, too. Braden Keys, two touchdowns. Wow. When we played the Condors, he went off on us. Receiver out of LSU, four catches, 28 yards. And, of course, two touchdowns. Very, very key. And taking a look at the Condors defense here, we got Eli Sokowitz, four tackles. And we got... Mike Collins, four tackles, but an interception and a pass deflection. So good play by the safety core for the Condors. Orbits get the W over the Golden Eagles. Couple subscriber players on this team as well. Kyler Murray played a pretty mistake-free game, so that's good. Johnny Waters here, of course, splitting reps with Jonathan Taylor. Always a tough task, but he had 11 carries, 43 yards, and a big, big touchdown. So shout out the running back out of UCLA and then also getting a look at the Orbit's defense here. We have Flash Parker who had one tackle and one tackle. That's it. But must have been enough because the Orbit's did get the W. Okay, see Antlers drop to the Blues. So the Virginia Beach Blues, one of the best teams in the SFL here. Check on my man Yeezy Fuentes, the receiver. He's played really well. And in this one, didn't have any targets. Very interesting. He's been playing great pretty much all season long. Lots of touchdowns. I think leads the team in yards. But for whatever reason, no targets in this one. And OKC Antlers, we have C. Ben here who played good. Five tackles, two TFLs, and also two pass deflections. But fortunately, it was not enough to overcome the powerhouse. That is the Virginia Beach Blue. Lumberjacks just got destroyed by the Oilers. Wow. Only seven points. We just played them, and it was an offensive shootout, but Michael Yakin did not perform well in this one. Only 184 yards, one touchdown, but two big picks. And we'll check on the stats of James Briner, the tight end. I mean, he was the recipient of that lone touchdown, so that's good. Three catches for 27 yards and the tutty. But unfortunately, the Lumberjacks did take a big L to the Houston Oilers. Sacramento Sentinels beat the Columbus Caps, and I'm checking on the stats of subscriber quarterback Rocky DiBernardo he played very good in this one 224 two touchdowns and a pick but the most important thing is his team did get the W Oakland Wizards we just added a player to that team and they dominated the Pioneers 31 to 7 Dak Prescott was the quarterback he didn't do too much but let's check on the rushing yards of our new subscriber player I am Al Musa 79 yards but three count them Three touchdowns. Wow. Instant impact. I hope that you are watching this, brother, because your player just balled out. And the Wizards are a playoff team, so they are going to continue in that upward trend here. And checking on Michael Briner's stats, he had four tackles and two tackles for loss. 
So a good, good game by both subscribers on the Oakland Wizards. Albuquerque Armadillos dropped to the San Diego Aviators. That looked to be a pretty exciting game. Got a couple receivers here on the Armadillos, so we'll check them out. Bjorn Jeffrey, the tight end. He played pretty good. Four catches for 37 yards. And then a newly added subscriber, Jaden Taylor, had a great game as well. Five catches for 34 yards and a big touchdown. Let's see if uh, Arturo Esquivel is back from injury. He is. Welcome back, Arturo. So happy to see you back, brother. I know you were sidelined for a couple weeks. Four tackles, you know, no big stats, TFLs or anything. But just seeing you on the field is enough to make me happy. Chicago Elks lost to the San Antonio Voyagers, who I believe that's the best team in the, in the SFL. And we play them next week. So getting a look at the rushing stats here for subscriber Darian Wolcott. Wow, 60 yards and three touchdowns. He literally was their offense in this one. Unfortunately, it was not enough to overpower the juggernaut that is the Houston Voyagers or San Antonio Voyagers, I meant, sorry. But Darian Wolcott, have a game, my friend. At least you did play great. River Hogs at Dreadnoughts. And that's an interesting one because we'll look at the stats first for a subscriber receiver here on the Dreadnoughts, Alexander Kloblek. And he had a big game, eight for 84, no touchdowns, but he was the leading receiver of anybody. So great job there, Alexander. Now going over to punting, for whatever reason, the Honolulu Dragons cut my man Jack Mavros, very good punter, rookie out of Washington, and the Memphis Riverhogs randomly picked him up. Don't know why, but uh, he had a touchback and a long of 54. So no longer on the Dragons, now you're on the Riverhogs, and he had a pretty good punting game. Looks like the Shamrocks had a bye, so we're going to have to wait to see any stats from Uku Tree Rat. So we will go ahead and check on the last game here. The Paris Black Knights, who do get the win over the London Mounties. We got a subscriber brother duo on this one. So Jaden Hayes didn't have a good game, though. 138 and one pick, but uh, CJ Stroud, 52 yards. What was this game? I mean, literally, what was the box score? 13 to seven. What happened in this game? Was it a lot of rushing? I mean, kind of, I guess. Well, 52 yards for CJ Stroud? I mean, silver lining, Caleb Hayes was literally the best receiver of the day at four catches for 69 yards. Very nice, by the way. But what kind of game was that? I have no idea. But uh, there's week 14 in the books, guys. We get a crazy, crazy W against the Salt Lake City Bisons, and we are literally taking on Going to be two weeks of no subscribers on either team. So if you want to join the San Antonio Voyagers or the San Diego Aviators, comment down below and you could see your player soon in the next coming episodes. But the Voyagers, best team in the SFL, this will be our big, big test next week. But that is going to do it for me tonight, guys. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. I will catch you on the next one. Until then, peace.